Hi everybody, Brian Bulwark with Roland DGA in Irvine, California, here to answer another question from the field. And today we are going to take a look at the cutting menu uh, within VersaWorks 6. So looking at the screen here, you see I have Windows 10 running and VersaWorks 6 loaded. I've got a couple of jobs already in my queue. Um, this auto shop job, I'm just going to double click and open it up and bring these settings into view a little better. And as you continue down the uh, options on the left hand column, you'll finally get to one. If you hover over it, you'll see cut control. So that's the one we're going to look at today. So right off the bat, at the very top, operation mode, print and cut, cut and print, print only, cut only. So very self-explanatory. So print and cut. So it'll do the printing first, then rewind and do the cut. Cut and print, very simply, do the cut first, then do the print. Um, it's really dependent on what your options are, what your uh, media might be, and what your needs might be, but 90 times out of 100, you're going to do print and cut. Um, the reason for that is it's better to let the ink hit and mate to the material and set, dry a, a portion, and then to continue on by cutting it. Um, because the knife will then be piercing both the ink and the vinyl material. Uh, about the only time I can think that you do a print, or I'm sorry, a cut and print, is there's a rare combination of materials. I think some of them are t-shirt type that uh, this makes sense. Um, maybe they're very sensitive to the knife so that they might perhaps cause uh, crazing or something where the pressure of the knife intersects. So you would then change it to cut first and then print. The only issues there, be careful of, which is um, you might want to include some dry time. Because remember, if you're doing the cut first, then the print. So the last thing that's happened is the print. Uh, and you've pre-cut. The ink, when you go to weed it, may have created a slight bond back to itself through the cut that's occurred. So just be, be very cautious when you weed anything that's done with a cut and a print. Next down is print only. So regardless whether or not this job has cutting data in it, you're simply telling the rip disregard it and I just want to print. And then of course cut only. Uh, similar situation, disregard all the print data, I just want to cut. So there you go. So let's put it back to print and cut. Uh, this next one down is an interesting one, which I'll touch on real briefly. Uh, cut all paths. You'll notice it's grayed out. Uh, the reason for that is for that to be functional, you actually need to set that in the queue properties and save it as part of the queue. So what that means is anything you drop into the queue, if you've activated this as a default in that queue, any job that you bring into that queue from then on will always cut whatever it sees every path regardless if it's been programmed for cutting or not if the design has any vector uh, elements in it at all it will actually cut them all i'll show you an example of that at the very end of this demo but we'll continue on from here so these that again is a rare instance and it's not used very often but it's, it's a powerful tool if you needed it next down very simply cut image boundaries. So I'm going to actually grow this design real quick. So again, I'm going to open it up and bring it back into sh screen here and say, I'm just simply did a fit to media so that it, it gets rather large. And I'm going to grow this a bit more and we will expand it to fill the screen. So now we have a nice big view of this print and cut design. I'm going to go back down to the cut menu. Notice if I say cut image boundary, and I click off, that blue designation to show that that was the active selection is now blinking red. And that indicates that is now just a common cut path. I can, if I choose, make the image boundary cut a perf cut by simply clicking on it and turning this feature on in the, uh, the controls here. And you'll notice that it changed from red to gray. This is really an important designation and I'll explain. Everything that's in a red that's a, a, a animated line segment here. We call them the dancing ants. <laughs> um, those are going to be standard cuts. So that is where the knife simply drops once, continues a complete object, and then lifts. That is a contour cut. 
and then the other ones which are gray along the perimeter now are have been programmed to be perf cuts perforation cuts so this is where with the correct programming which i'll explain in a bit the knife will drop into the material at two different depths you'll program a depth that cuts just into the material and then there's a secondary cut that cuts completely through the backing paper that the material is carried on. These are really intricate and they have to be set precisely. I can't emphasize that enough. It's very, very important. If you do not set some of these pressures correctly, you'll actually cause slight damage to what is called the cutting protection strip. It's a, it's a strip of hard Teflon usually in our printers that sits on the bed of the machine underneath where the material sits. And when the knife, if it were to go through and be too deep, it will cut into that strip. Well, the problem is if you do that enough, you start to create what is a wear groove in the area that you've accidentally cut into in the Teflon on the strip. So you create this channel, this opening, this gap, instead of a nice hard surface for the knife to press down on the material and be able to cut, it'll actually start piercing the material and expose itself through to the other side into the Teflon area, it can cause jamming. So a good example is if you see a lot of jamming occurring on your machine, do a visual inspection on that strip simply by getting a good flashlight um, and just get close to it and inspect it. And you're, what you're looking for, what should be there is a Teflon strip that has no wear marks across it. If you see that it's got gouges, that's your knife that's pierced too deep and it's caused uh, uh, basically damage to the Teflon strip and it should be replaced. That is a replaceable part uh, available through Roland and your service uh, providers. So again, it's just some tips, but again, that explains the difference between the red and the gray dancing ants or the contour cuts and the perf contour cuts. All right, so that's the image boundary. That's very simply saying I want a boundary wherever the active area is and I want it cut, and I either want to perform it as a perf cut or as a contour cut, just cutting the material, not the backing. All right, so there's the image boundary. Moving on. After, uh, so return to origin after print. So um, very simply, it programs the machine that after it's completed the print process, it's going to simply return to origin. It's just that simple. Uh, another one would be return to origin after cut. So again, depending on how you set up the release, the operation mode at the top, we can do just cut only, let's say. So we're only going to do all the cutting. Notice this one is grayed out because there's no printing, but we can select return to origin after cut. Good reason for that. For both of them actually and the reason you'd have them if you're not comfortable with this material and you're just not sure if it images well with the um, profile that you've selected so let's say we're going to a third party vinyl and we're just not sure if we're going to get the proper ink loading and we haven't done a lot of testing but we just want to be sure you can program this to not do anything except print let's say right and then return to origin. Well, the beautiful part of this is once you return to origin, you're still controlled within the same space. So if you really wanted to, you could actually, if the, if let's say the imagery was too uh, light in its density, you could release the print data a second time and it'll print directly over itself. And um, similarly, if I say cut only, so let's say this was a cut only job. We just have some colored vinyl and here we go. It's going to cut this automotive decal. Well, let's say you're not familiar with the material and how it cuts. What you could do is simply do a single cut, which it defaults to. So that's just the knife going down at its depth and you hope you cut it correctly. But you could return to origin after cut. And if you wanted to look at the material, see if it weed is. And if it can't, you simply release another cut. Or if you really wanted to, you could churn on cut passes and release that cut multiple times. So if it's a difficult to cut material, or if you're just not comfortable with it and you want to make sure, turn on the return to origin and you've locked yourself into the same area so you can re-release a second time. So nice features that we've got to enable that to happen. And moving further down, uh, you have two options here. We, if we leave this cutting condition setting off, this indicates that you've set everything up at the machine end. 
And anyone that knows me, you know that I prefer to do that. I always prefer to work with the machine first, dial in everything so that at this end, I'm just concerned with how it prints. Things like the media feed cal, the cut pressures, all of that is all, all of that is what I like to set at the machine end. So I typically leave this off. But if I feel like I'm not sure or I, I want to change it, maybe I've made set the machine the way I want it to. And then just by chance, I think about it a second time. I'm sitting here and I'm like, you know what? I think I want to kick it up a little bit. I maybe I want to increase the cutting force. So here we go. I could start making changes here real quick. I'll change the cutting speed, take it down. Let's say the material is something like a uh, sandblast material. So I'll cut it, I'll slow it way down. It's down with 10 centimeters a second speed. I'll up the force to 200 because I know that perf is, uh, or sandblast is very difficult to cut. And I'll definitely change this to a our 60 degree knife, which has a blade offset of 0.50. So there you go. I've overridden what's set on the machine and we've taken control of it in the red. So I've done that without having to go to the machine and reset it or do anything else. So those options are here if you need them. Execute pre-feed operation. It's very important. So in the previous uh, videos I've done, I've talked a lot about media feed calibration. Okay. Well, during cut, it's equally important to control how much force the, the machine is using to drag that material through and actually move it a lot because remember it's now cutting so we've got the solenoid activated the knife's dropping it's piercing material and there's additional forces we've now we're pushing we're pulling we're doing all sorts of things it's really difficult on the material so something you can do to help ease that force and take some of the pressure off is to execute a pre-feed so what we're asking is in this case Take a look at the design and in the way I've got it set up on the screen, it's going to extend about 33 inches from the origin to its full depth. All right. Well, if I don't execute a pre-feed, that means that it's going to, in this case, since it's cutting only, first thing the machine's going to do, it's going to ram, just run the material through very quickly. Well, if it's a full roll of material, it could stall. Very simply, if the motors aren't strong enough to do an immediate pull at full strength at full speed, it could cause the machine to, to, to jerk slightly or worse yet it can even sometimes stretch materials um, if the material is very flimsy third-party material we're just not sure where it came from it could actually stretch the material and that's never good because now you're losing accuracy so a good thing to remember the pre-feed so in this case you turn it on it simply looks to the design and it says oh okay so you want to go 33 inches no problem so the first thing it'll do Pre-feed, so it brings the material through the, through the printer at a comfortable rate. It frees it up and then brings it back to the origin. So now you've got a loose 33 inches of material instead of dragging directly from the roll. So it can create a kind of a more comfortable environment to do the cutting and not have to force everything so abruptly. So there you go. That's another option that we have built into the rib. Uh, moving down, we've already talked about the perform perf cut for the image boundary. It's not turned on at the moment. Uh, if we do this, it becomes activated. So remember, these two work in harmony. Cut image boundary and then perform perforated cut for the image boundary. That's just an option. Now, let's go back. We'll just create it as a print and cut job. So I'm not going to cut the image boundary. This is how it came in standard. So this is without me selecting really anything at all. So we've cleared everything out. You'll notice that right away under perforated cut controls, these are already activated in there and there's some values in there by default. That's because in this particular design, sure enough, around the boundary, I've already got a rounded corner rectangle as the perforated cut. So it sees that, shows it to you as a great dancing line. And it says, here's your perforation length. So let's go through these real quick. Very simply, the perforation length is the total distance of the perforation distance. So uh, in this case, I'm going to take it down to a half inch, so 0.5. So every half inch, it's going to lift the blade and leave a little uh, piece of uncut material. That is, in this case, 0 0.0, and I usually take this down to about 0 0.035 is the value I particularly like. So we are kind of in the office, we call these chads. Remember the old 
uh, ballot uh, scandal where the chads were half broken. Well, the chad is very simply the piece that's left to hold the um, uh, hold everything together. So without these, if you had no chads, if you had no half cut anywhere, it's basically cutting through completely and your design is going to fall out of the material and that won't work. It'll jam everything. So you need everything to stay integral to the original piece of vinyl material. So to do that, you've got to create these tiny uh, uh, pieces that hold the integrity of the design together even while it's cutting. So here we go. A perforation length. So every half inch. So here's the perforation force. This is the force in which we know that gets that knife through the total material depth into the backing and just through to the other side. Um, it depends on the material. This is so dependent and all of these have to be tested first before you do a perf cut job. So when you're at the machine, you're going to run it through its cut test multiple times, increasing the force until you have enough to just make it through the material. Uh, we'll cover that in another video at another time. But again, just remember you have to do your own tests. And don't forget too that the cutting pen that holds the knife has an adjustable cap. A, it, it is basically a twist cap that as you twist it, it starts protecting the shaft of the knife all the way up to the tip. So the more you twist, the more it, it basically goes up towards the tip and only exposes the amount that you want of the tip of the knife. So beautiful part of this is if you do this right, you set it so that there's only enough knife to make it through all of the material that then protects you. Cause even if you set this perforation force too high, the cap will prevent any of the knife from getting any deeper and you'll save your uh, cutting protection strip and a part that you would have to replace otherwise if you went too deep. So again, another tip. So here we go. We have our perf length. So every half inch, make a chad. And here's the perforation force. We know that 150 goes all the way through this material perfectly. And I've already set my knife and it goes just enough through. Then we have the half cut length. So this is very simply that chad. How big is it? About 0 0.035 most vinyl materials. And then the half cut force. So again, that's only just to pierce the material at the top. A normal vinyl is anywhere between I don't know, 50 to 80 grams. So let's put in 50. So there it is. I have set up for perforation. I've got uh, a knife that's piercing, but leaving a piece of material every half inch all the way around. And when you're done, hopefully gracefully, everything finishes and you come out of the machine. And when you get this design, you should be able to pop it through the rest of the material and it should come out and become a separate part, a sticker that's ready to sell or take to the client. Well, I hope this has been helpful and I look forward to seeing you in another video. Thank you.